Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to enter into this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, 
and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now, and not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Our Lord ends today's parable with what may seem a bit like a throwaway line, but we who have faith know that each part of sacred scripture is divinely inspired, and they are for our benefit. He ends with, whoever has ears ought to hear. Jesus says this multiple times during his public ministry and his teaching. But what does it mean exactly? Now this phrase matches something that my mother would always repeat to us children growing up. Whoever has ears ought to hear, in my mother's language and her teaching style, amounts to one of her favorite sayings, you may not plead ignorance. We were told this quite often. We knew the rules and expectations of us growing up, and we had to act accordingly. When I would get into trouble, I always knew I could come up with whatever silly excuse I wanted, which would never work, but I could not plead ignorance. Christ is telling us, if you have ears, you ought to not just hear this message, but heed it, internalize it, commit to it. We may not listen to the preaching and the word of God and merely shrug our shoulders at it. We are required to make the act of faith, to actually believe in our Lord and the truth that he reveals to us, or we can do what many did who heard him preach and walk away. Our belief in Christ is, in many ways, an all-or-nothing proposition. Christ did not speak falsely in some areas and more truthfully in others, as if we get to decide which things he said that we prefer and which we'd rather not hear. The church preaches a heavenly banquet of which we take part here on earth through the Eucharist. But let's be very clear, it's not a buffet. We do not get to pick which parts of Christ we like and which we don't. Whoever has ears ought to hear the teaching of Christ because not only is each part of his teaching perfect, but it is also perfectly meant for each and every person, for we've all been fearfully made for him and in his image and likeness. All of us meant to be saved through his passion, death, and resurrection. Christ does not say, whoever has ears can hear if they'd like, or whoever has ears probably should listen. 
we all ought to hear. It is an imperative. Now this ties in so perfectly with the content of the parable that preceded this. The sower scattering his seed is truly the image of Christ himself, planting his seed within us. And he gives us the list of potential outcomes. Now, obviously in this parable, Christ himself is the seed, and we, our very souls, are the ground. We can take in his word and his life into ourselves, or we can reject it, but we all must hear. The first image we have is that of the seed that is scattered and immediately pecked away by birds. Those who may come in contact with our Lord, with his word, with his ministers, and they have no desire whatsoever for him. The Lord does not come in uninvited, and the seed that is scattered does not always take root. If our faith is left at face value, not internalized, that seed will always be swept away and tossed aside by the world itself, who so often disdains the faith. We then have the seed which falls upon rocky ground with little soil, and it's able to shoot up and grow for a short period of time, but there's no depth to it, nothing penetrating or long-lasting. Now, not to be entirely negative, this would be someone who hears the word of God and receives it with joy, but they make no effort in the journey that it is meant to be. This would be someone who might believe that faith in Christ is a one-time decision with very little follow-through. And the blazing sun, the trials of life, easily burn that plant away and remove the seed. We ought to examine ourselves to remove the rocks, the vices or habits that hinder our souls and prevent the word of God taking root within us. The stones of our soil are truly just our own hardness of heart. Another seed falls among thorns And in its attempt to take root, it is choked by the nasty plants around it. Those who have allowed the wrong cares, the wrong desires, the wrong motivations to guide their life, in the seedbed of their soul, they've cultivated thorns. What a sad image. Let's not miss the significance of the thorns themselves, the very thing with which Jesus was crowned, mocking his majesty insulting a man who they refuse to see as Lord. The thorns that can grow within our souls come about from choosing the world, ambitions, power, comfort, glory here on earth rather than eternal life in heaven. Now this is not to blame the things of this earth, but to blame a mind with a twisted hierarchy of goods, one that would not place Christ first, And as they tend the thorns of their life, they definitely do not adequately care for their faith, which is the greatest gift they've received. Now, our last image is quite simple, a seed that falls upon rich soil. But rich with what? Rich in charity, love, self-discipline, virtue. A soul that is rich does not concern itself with being rich in the world. A soul is rich that prefers humility, has a preferential love for the poor and for sacrifice, one that places God first. As our Lord's seed is scattered, he does wish for it to take root in all people, but that obviously does not happen. We are free creatures. Our actions are our own. Do we cooperate with grace? Do we allow God to work within us? He does not come and barge in, but he does give the grace to receive him. We must be docile enough not only to accept this seed that has been scattered, but to tend to it and nurture the roots that grow from his love. Our souls are fed through his sacraments. Make use of them. The confessional is where the rocks and the thorns of our soul are not just rooted out, but they're handed over to God himself and we again are made into rich soil. For only then are we properly disposed to receive the ultimate nourishment, our Lord's own body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. Whoever has ears ought to hear, to take these words of our Lord 
not just as a guide to some happy life, but to a holy one. We may not plead ignorance. We know what God asks of us, and we all must persevere and remain close to Christ in this life so that we may be with him forever in the next. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Confident of the Father's love for us, we join our voices and present to him our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that the hearts of its members might be like good soil in which the word of God may take root, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they might seek to promote the common good and enact policies that protect the most vulnerable members of the societies they govern, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the dying, those who suffer loneliness, addiction, and unemployment, and those whose lives continue to be impacted by the coronavirus, that Christ will be one with them through, his, through the compassion of Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, and for those who are engaged in the defense of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to priesthood and religious life, and the renewal of Christian marriage and family life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners, members of our families, and friends who are infirmed, for the faithful departed, and for John Chudy, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask that you hear these prayers and perfect them according to your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of God of all creation to receive this wine we all provide to us so saving Lord God we ask you to receive us be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts with joyful lips we sing to you that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You 
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look upon these offerings of the Church, O Lord, and as she makes her prayer to you, grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. When the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. Thomas Mourn, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Please to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, 
and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and to graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus, joy of loving hearts, the fount the of, of life and a true light. We seek the, the peace your love imparts, and stand rejoicing in your sight. The body of Christ. The body of Your Christ. truth unchanged has ever stood. The body you of Christ. save all those who heed your call. The body to of Christ. those 
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. A few announcements. Reminder that our newly scheduled adoration, benediction, and confession on Tuesday evenings, each Tuesday from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., along with adoration and benediction, confessions are available also Tuesday evenings from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Full details can be found on our parish website. Please continue to sign up for our online weekend, up for onla, on, please sign up online for our weekend masses. The parish office can help if you're encountering any difficulties 
and registration for the upcoming religious education year continues online also. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl amongst the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.